and we're live with episode 27 of the Wake Up Podcast. And this is a, this is a special one. I've got my good friend, Francis from Bull Bitcoin on with me and, uh, and Dave Bradley from Bitcoin Well now. And th this one's going to be called the Remnant Podcast. And it's going to be a little bit different to things I've done in the past. M maybe a little bit more like what I did with Stoney and, and American Hoddle, where we, where we just spoke about the world and all the fucking stupidity going on and... Yeah, I think I, I couldn't be happier to have these two guys on the call with me. So, uh, boys, I'll throw it over to you. Francis, um, I want to hear about this, uh, the exemption bracelet story. Um, so I'll let you roll. Right. Um, well, thanks, man, for, for having me and uh, having Dave uh, on board. Um, it's really good thanks. to talk again on, uh, on a podcast. I've actually been kind sure. of <clears throat> offline, uh, so to speak, for the past few months um, in, uh, in Central America. Uh, I have su successfully escaped the pod uh, with no uh, intention to ever return. I am not eating bugs. Actually, I'm eating, uh, focusing right now on eating non-GMO food, natural food, a lot of meats, a lot of tuna, a lot of uh, weightlifting, a lot of uh, surfing. Definitely in tune with my tribal self, uh, sharing a lot of meals in common with friends and stuff like that. So, um, beautiful. I've cut out Twitter. I've cut out the noise uh, for many reasons. Um, one of which is the main reason being, I think that I just see uh, the pl the pl the plan is now to uh, to opt out radically, just let everything crumble. I don't think there's anything mm -hmm. else we can do. I'm actually scared um, for my own safety. There's no way I can have a family in Canada. I think now the preaching to the masses is over. Um, even the preaching to the remnant is over as far as I'm concerned. Now it's time for everybody to kind of like do their own thing. So the, one of the, you know, I'm living a mask free life, which is really important to me. One of the reasons, one of the things that's, you know, we can talk all day about the lockdowns and the, the tyrannical totalitarian great reset takeover. But one of the things that really bothered me the most was the masks. And I remember back in May, being, uh, I was going to the cafe, even when it was a lockdown, there was like a takeaway cafe and I was making a point to like be outside as much as possible. And I remember hearing about the, ma the mandatory mask and just imagining this beautiful cafe scene with a bunch of girls like on their laptops, looking at me, smiling, a bunch of like dudes like hanging out, chilling and everybody with masks and everything's gray and horrible. And the mask itself being, you know, useless uh, from a scientific point of view, um, and the way that it's being used, obviously, it just makes it worse, probably, for health, for everyone. The mask is the ultimate symbol of compliance. It's so ugly. It makes you mm -hmm. so uniform. It's so nonsensical. It's dehumanizing. It's literally like put on a fucking, you're like, you're, it's, it's the ultimate symbol of submitting your individuality to the collective. Like you are, you are, you are a virus carrier. You are a threat to us. Um, you can only be an individual within the bounds that we said very strictly um, and so forth. So the mask was like a huge deal. Um, so this summer, so basically I was, since the beginning, I was doing a bunch of, I was trying to find ways to rebel because um, not only because I was, like from a mental health perspective, I was taking the lockdown and the lack of freedom very uh, difficult. It was difficult. Thankfully, I was not drinking, not smoking, and not taking any drugs. I was. I had even stopped coffee, and I was like working out all the time. So thankfully, I had like that going for me. But I did like a bunch of fucking graffiti at night. I started to like try to do some <laughs> some propaganda, some stuff like that, try to make a point. And then uh, I moved to Alberta, and then I went to um, to Banff and to like a fancy hotel there. And I showed up and, you know, there's no, val and I had this really fancy suite booked, like, you know, very expensive, like suite overlooking the lake. And, you know, the valet is not working because there's no, because of COVID. And then they asked me to wear a mask to get in. And I'm like, nope, I have a, you know, I'm, I'm exempt. And then the guy says, oh, no problem. I'm going to give you this, this blue ribbon to put around your, your wrist. And that makes you, um, you know, the, the staff knows not to bother you. If had the, the blue where, where, where did the where did the idea of just saying exempt come from? Did 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 you did you hear of that somewhere, or did you did that just sort of like blurt out of your mouth in the moment? Yeah, well, I had been using it for a little while, I guess, because being kind of like from a policy background and kind of a hacker background, like of course, like me and Dave are expert at understanding the complexity of the 
bureaucratic priorities and uh, what if I, you know, opportunities and also like the incentives and the psychology. So basically mm -hmm. we know that there's like medical exemptions and they're not really supposed to ask for because of privacy laws and, and stuff like that. And yep. um, uh, the idea was also, I, I never said I was exempt because of a medical con condition. I just kind of had this, I had this moment. <laughs> the idea came kind of like, actually in, in April, I was kind of like walking on the street, getting a coffee. And as I was walking down the street, people were dodging out of my way in a very weird way. And they were looking like scurrying in front of me. And I had this kind of like weird transcendental moment where I was like, had this revelation that I was like, I am just a fucking alpha. I'm a fucking pack leader. These are like, what are they? Like, they're just scowling people in front of me. It's, it's so weird. Like, like, I don't, their rules don't apply to me. Like, I don't, I'm not yeah, part of yeah. that. I am not part of that collective. We are not in this together. They are set apart. Mm -hmm. I think that this has created a new binary division between kind of like an overwhelming majority of cowards and fanatics and like a small minority of remnant or individuals that have like the fortitude and strength of character to like an ideological soundness to kind of oppose this. But so the idea to be exempt was like, this thing doesn't apply to me. I am exempt. I'm not going to say it's a medical condition. It's just exempt. And then, so they gave me this exemption bracelet and I'm just walking around this hotel and I'm like, I am fucking God. I'm just like, just waving my wrist around. Just like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Like I have, and, and just the absurdity of the little magical thing was just wonderful. Like we went canoeing on a, on a, on the, you know, big band flake and everybody is waiting in line with the mask on. And I'm just like standing around and, all I had to do was just just to declare my exemption. I like declare yourself exempt, and you know they just don't know how to handle the non-compliant person. There's just everybody's just like I don't agree, but I still do it. But what about if you say no, I won't do it? So then I wear this thing around, and I'm just fuck it. I'm just gonna fucking use it all the time. So I have this hotel like blue bracelet bracelet around my my wrist, and I start using it in like cafes and stuff like that, and it always works. It always works. And this was an exercise in psychology that I was doing, which was essentially that these little mini Hitlers, which is what I call them, the retail staff that has, that eats, you know, shit fucking Uber eats garbage and it's on Netflix and Twitch. And they're like the lost generation of, you know, hope. they have like, they're born into debt. Like there's no savings whatsoever, no jobs prospect. They're just fucking, you know, 20 year old cashiers. And like with COVID now they're little, you know, power tripping and finally they can like exert their anger onto the unsuspecting clients and like, I'm going to make this guy do this and he can't say anything about it. You know, like they're, they're really just awful, awful people. And like, but they kind of like all, they're getting like these memos from corporate, you know, all the time, like they can do this and that, and there's all these new rules and then it doesn't make any fucking sense. And then you can't do, you know, all these things make no fucking sense. And they just kept getting these different instructions and they're just fucking following them. So I was like, well, if I just state my, my exemption very authoritatively, like the, my, my aura of authority and like dominance over these like better followers, they will just live, I will manifest my exemption into reality essentially. And I like fucking Peter Pan, you know, like the magic wand. So I started to do that and they, I assume what was going on in their brain was that they were confused and they were just, you know, looking for any plausible deniability that they did not make any decision whatsoever. They were just following the rules and, I stated a rule and they, they, they just follow it like inst instinctively as right? you state the rule with yeah. authority and they'll just like fucking follow you. Um, so there's three steps. That's what it comes down to. They, yep. like, yeah, yeah. They, don't, they, they don't care. Like the majority of people, probably 90% of people don't actually care about masks. They don't care about any of these restrictions. They just, they care about two things. One, they don't want to piss off the very angry and vocal, like, two to five percent minority of Karens that will will jump down your throat and cancel you if you don't follow the rules. And then the other thing is just the big, you know, they they trust that the powers that be have their best interests in mind. And so no, it's, as long it's, as it's they're even more than that they're, they're safe. I, yeah, I'd argue it's even more than that. I think it's just this blind, like kind of what Francis described him as. I think it's like a blind um, obedience to authority 
for the sake of being obedient to authority. Like it's, it's the nanny state syndrome because like I, you know, on my side, I, Francis, you, you inspired me to go on, like I ordered a series of my own uh, um, uh, bracelets as well. Um, but what I also created was I, I just made up a fucking doctor's note with a medical exemption. I made it up. I literally just did some reading and I said, okay, so what the, what's the risk? The, the, is anyone at risk of, um, you know, rebreathing their own carbon dioxide? And, and, and I found like a little article and I basically copied pasted that in, made up a fucking bullshit um, doctor's note um, as a letterhead. And man, I was flying around Europe um, I was, you know, going into, uh, you know, shops and gyms and all this sort of stuff, just present the fucking note. And, you know, I, I just authoritatively said, look, I'm exempt. Um, it's against the law to ask me to wear a mask, um, blah, blah, blah. So, so and, and that, I got around a lot of stuff, but recently things got worse. Like I, I got arrested um, on, a, on, you know, off a plane in Turkey because, uh, you know, I, I really you pushed the uh, the note, then the fucking assholes, they're like, okay, well, you can't wear a mask, but um, they they ended up giving me one of those ridiculous face shields, which don't do anything anyway, but they made me wear the face shield, but, and then I just fucking snapped and I couldn't handle it. So I like took the face shield off and, you know, we we're already in the plane, so they couldn't throw me off. And I was like, what are you going to do? Turn the fucking plane around? I said, go fuck yourself. Um, you can't do anything. Alex, Alex, I fucking love you. <laughs> I love you, man. That that's amazing. That's amazing. And you you know, like you know that photo that everyone always posts on social media, like all the Nazis kind of like doing like the fascist salute, uh -huh. and like it's like this one guy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Everybody posted, but everyone's a fucking pussy. And it sucks. Like, you know who else did that? Fucking uh Jim, Surfer Jim. He got kicked off of a plane, got like banned from United, I don't know who, who, what airline it was, but dude, like that's the, the only that that's that's like such a low bar to be a hero you know it's like our society has become so shit know, and right? there's like there's there's zero yeah. opportunity to shine in anything and like the only thing you have to do is be like no i will not wear your motherfucking face diaper you know and like <clears throat> the exception thing is very important for people to understand that we are living in a world of narratives where yeah. the reality is nothing right it is a live action role playing game being played and there's the pandemic warriors and there's the social justice warriors and there's all these kinds of warriors and you can be the fucking Bitcoin remnant overlord sovereign individual that is exempt from all these things and has a force shield of fucking pure alpha energy around him and organizes his life to avoid that. Like that is definitely something that you can like manifest into reality. So the bracelet is the, the easiest example. So the three step process that I had was one, it's okay. You know, these people are scared, right? So you say, it's okay. It's okay. I have the bracelets too. The statement, sorry, it's okay. I am exempt. Two is the, sta the statement. It's okay. I am exempt. And three, you show the bracelet and you say, I have the exemption bracelet. And like in their brain very quickly, like you just go through and they just register that as just being. And then, so, so that, that is, that is like the energy that the Bitcoiners are, are thriving on. you know, it's like, well, you know, like wh whatever you guys do, you know, we're kind of exactly we're doing our own little thing. It doesn't really affect us. Um, but the, the the reality is that we have like bodies in the physical world, sort of like they're 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 bullshit. Like actually, like affects us. So um, yeah, so so that was the the ex and the exemption became so real that <laughs> and this is the story. Like I was with Dave and we went to this bar in Calgary, and that time I was being relatively rowdy about the, um, the, the the my opposition to the the lockdowns and um uh you know i i, I get into the restaurant and i whip out the, the exemption bracelet and i'm like oh it's okay i have the i'm exempt i have the bracelet oh, the, and and the, the, the horses what's you that you didn't even have the bracelet this, at this point no that's right you're, you're correct you're <laughs> correct i didn't have the bracelet on i i just waved my i you're right dave I didn't have the bracelet on, but I just waved my um, my wrist and I had like a hoodie on. And I said, oh, I have the exemption bracelet. Um, and then she's like, oh, okay. And then she looks at Dave and Dave is in a t-shirt and she's like, where's your exemption bracelet? 
Maybe it's like, you know, his wrists are bare. There's no way to fake having it, you know. Now, now everybody's looking at Dave's wrists. Like, there's no magician trick going on here at all. It's obviously, uh -huh. the, you know, the exemption bracelet is um, a magician's trick. Like, I don't know what they call it, like distraction uh -huh. or whatever. Yep. But, but yep. so she, she, inter she immediately internalized the rule, immediately accepted it and enforced it without question, just because I stated it and looked in her eyes, you know, and that's, that's a really powerful message because really seriously, like right now, all bets are off, you know, there's no more rules. They are doing this to like, you know, they're literally pretending that there's, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about COVID that much, but you know, they, they've changed the rules. We can be whatever the fuck we want. And if we are the remnant sovereign individuals that, opt out of the system and watch the ship fucking burn. And we just get to walk in with like, you know, our attitude and do whatever the fuck we want. And if they don't let us, like we just take our business elsewhere. That's the, the key part. Like we you have to take our business I missed, elsewhere. I missed how loose her, her tie to reality was. And that's like, she looked at me and she said, oh, do you have the bracelet? And I, I immediately was like, shit, I don't have, like you had long sleeves and I didn't. And I was like, oh shit, I don't have. The bracelet she's like oh do you have any other proof that you're exempt and uh i said no and we're keep in mind we're standing like four feet away from the table we're hoping to sit at so now instead of walking those four feet in 10 seconds we're arguing with her at the door which just defeats all logic but so taking that into mm -hmm. account about a week later i was at a different restaurant in edmonton and i walked in and i walked in about one minute after they opened so i was the only person in the restaurant and I had short sleeves again, and the, the guy asked me if I had a mask, and I used the exact same technique, like, no, it's okay, I am exempt. And then I said, I have the bracelet, and I held up my wrist. And even though I had bare arms, like, very obviously did not have a bracelet, the fact that I was holding up my arm, like, <laughs> I had a moment with the guy, we looked at each other in the eyes for about 30 seconds, while he was deciding, like, is there something I'm missing here? Is this something that I should get involved in? And then he just, he just gave up and he's like, okay, go ahead. Exactly. So I mean, I've been using the remote, interesting. the remote bracelet technique because the, the, the bracelet stays with you forever. When you've declared yourself to be exempt, you're exempt from every rule, except the rules that you agree upon with your neighbors and um, which you explicitly opt into. I I want to I want to dig on the on the rules that we opt into, but you know I, I might make one mention is that what what's you know what's a little bit discouraging for me is that even with um, even even with these techniques, I think you know for me I would say four or five months ago that worked. It worked in airports. It worked everywhere. But recently, um, it's you know it it hasn't worked as well because the these clowns have like it, it you know the the level of indoctrination has become so ingrained that despite even like a a, a letter that I carry around with me as like a backup if I you know if the bracelet um, doesn't the technique doesn't work etc. Um, even that like which literally says from a doctor. It, um, it is uh, potentially fatal for my patient to wear a mask. They will overlook that and still force you to wear a mask. That's how like deranged this whole fucking thing has become. And, and this is sort of where I've kind of, um, you know, gone beyond like, I, I don't know, it's, 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 for me, it's like a, a sadomasochistic twilight zone. It, it's, you know, they want to almost inflict pain on you because they they can't stand up for themselves. Um, and they want to, you know, they, they want to bring someone else down, irrespective of the fact that like, I mean, my, my medical certificate is bullshit. But what if it is real? Like, what if I go into a shop, say, look, I can't wear this, you know, and I need to buy something um, or I need to do something. Uh, I put it on. And I fucking collapse and die. There's literally, you know, m morality has gone out the window and kind of, you know, like what you were saying, um, Francis, it's like th there's, there's no longer any, um, any semblance of understanding of any fucking rules because 
everything is just so conflicted at this point. And, and this is what Ayn Rand warned about in both Atlas Shrugged and in, um, fuck, what's the name of the other book? I always forget it. Uh, help me out here. The Fountainhead. Fountainhead, that's the one, yeah. Yeah, so, so she warns about this stuff, you know, the, 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 the dangers of moral relativity, you know, where, where everything becomes relative, then you end up with absolutely no rules. And I think th this, is a, this is a nice segue into this opportunity now moving forward, which is how do we, I guess, adapt in this world where there is no logical rule set you know nothing actually matters everything is just a narrative and the narrative changes day by day based on you know where you are what group you're in you know what apparent fucking you know uh strata of society you're in like it's, it's literally um impossible to decipher so what's the best course of action for people who you know are sick and tired of this bullshit and and, and i like this approach of all right we will dictate our own rules, you know, and, and it, it's not as straightforward as that because, you know, I think, Dave, when you and I were speaking last week, you know, you were saying how, you know, it's becoming dumber and dumber sort of in, in, in the surroundings. And that's why I sort of escaped from where I was. Um, and, you know, a big part of, I guess, why Francis, you escaped as well. But I think the strategy moving forward is this you know, multiple, you know, it's the lead bullet strategy. There's, there's no one silver bullet. You can't just, you know, purely opt out. Like, you know, we, we need to opt out. We need to speak up, you know, we need to, we need to make our own rules and, you know, behave by, you know, our rule set. But we also, I think, you know, what I've found fun is I actually ridicule uh, consistently people who are wearing masks, whether on the street um, whether they, you know, I get pulled up about it. I laugh at them. I'm getting a shirt made um, today with on the front is, uh, you know, it's, it's that picture of, you know, the Nazis all, uh, you know, got their um, Heil Hitler up. Um, and then underneath it, it's got, you know, this two people with a mask saying, oh, um, how could they be so brainwashed, um, you know, to, to do what they did and just go along right. with it. So I'm, I'm, I'm literally just going to, I want to, provoke people fucking live by my rules but simultaneously uh, opt out so i think if anyone wants to talk to to those series of points i'd be i'd, I'd love to yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me start this time francis because yours will probably be a million miles long um, correct <laughs> the way i see it is you can you can flee which is what a lot of people have done is flee to try to go somewhere less restrictive uh you can fight and no one is really doing that yet at scale. There's protests mm -hmm. and some a little bit of disobedience, but that's probably not, we haven't reached that point yet. And then the other option is you can pretend to comply. And I think that's where, like, that's where capitalism is going to solve this problem in a lot of ways is I think, um, you know, the next big thing obviously is the vaccines. And I think uh, we're probably going to see a whole industry spring up around faking either documentation or uh, some kind of a chip or what, whatever it is that they want to use to, to force you to take a vaccine is there'll probably be a black market just dealing with that so that rational people can make their own choices. I think that's, I think that's, I, I think that's totally that. spot on, right? But obviously Dave, you forget like that's how, what's the percentage of people do you think for each category that we're going to see like in two years, for example, or maybe next year, next year. Well, I, I think, um, I guess the other, the, the, the other option that I didn't mention is just comply. And that's by far the biggest group is everyone that's mm -hmm. very likely to comply. I think the, the globalists are doing a very good job of knowing how far they can push us. And that's why you see things like the, the curfew and the much harsher lockdowns in a very socialist place like Montreal, whereas like here in, in Calgary, we're, uh, you know, a lot more freedom minded and they, they're not pushing that hard. And they're, uh, they're pushing back a little bit on those, uh, on those restrictions. So I think um, they're going to probably do a pretty good job of getting like a critical mass of people to comply wherever they are. The, 
their whole incentive is to keep the group that would fight as small as possible, right? And so realistically, um, I expect, like mo most of these measures are, are um, security theater. They're, nobody nobody implementing these things even really cares, right? There's, there's so many gaps in the measures that if, like if there was an actual major danger, um, we'd all be dead, right? Um, we'd all be dead, yeah. Yeah, and 100%. so, <laughs> Like the, the uh, like what I've never been expect? to Southeast. I don't know, <laughs> you know, no one knows anyone who's died of this thing, right? Yeah. Almost no one. What what I expect is that, uh, you know, you'll have a pretty small minority of like two to five percent of people who take that path of pretending to comply and getting, um, you know, fake vaccine certificates. Um, you know, I, w I wish there was a way of fake wearing a mask like that. <laughs> Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe a glasses that project a little hologram over your eyes or over your, or your, your mouth and nose. No, and of course. And, and actually, you know, it's, a, it's cool. I have like Dave and I, I actually was talking with Dave. We were in, you know, we, we were very interested in the market solutions, so to speak. And one of them was, yeah, getting a doctor that's like really into, I don't know, that likes money and do kind of like what they did with the cannabis industry. You know, you get these doctors to just sign fucking 100 exemption slips a day. Um, or the problem with the fake vaccination certificates I was thinking is these like vaccine enforcers are so zealous that what I'm worried about the most, okay, so for the vaccine, here's what's gonna happen. They're never gonna say it's mandatory. Okay, it's not, vaccination is not, we repeat it, it is not mandatory. But if you wanna take a plane, you need to have a vaccination yeah. certificate. You know, but, yeah. but it's not mandatory at all. And, but if you want to go watch a hockey game, you need to have a vaccination. And actually, if you want to work for the public service, or if you want to take the bus, or if you want to do, you know, if you want to go into a public space, or, you know, and since you're going to be more at risk, maybe you need to pay a 10% health premium. But it is not, it is not, I repeat, it's not mandatory to take the vaccine. I think, like, this is definitely the way that it's going. And I think, like, what I've, I know for a fact that the government in Quebec has, so to speak, taken away the children of at least one person as a result of political opinions regarding the effectiveness of masks and vaccines and lockdown. Um, so what I'm kind of afraid of is gonna be like, oh, well, you know, if you don't vaccinate your kids, they can't do this. And if they can't do this, then they're being mistreated. And if they're being mistreated, then we need to force you into counseling. But in order to get the counseling sessions, you need to have the vaccine. And if you don't show, you know, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, those kind of yeah. things, when it's this Kafkaesque, kind of like a theory of the absurd. And, you know, Dave, Dave, Dave had this, this great theory, um, which was that it all started with the, the plastic straws. It all started with this. this. So what we've, what we've seen is this guilt trip of environmentalism, of gender and race inequality, and now of COVID, of the masks and, and of the compliance. Right, but it really started with the recycling, the plastic straws, the idea yeah. of the virtue signal. It's completely useless, right? Like, you know, all that shit goes in the same, you know, fix the fucking garbage problem first. Like, pick, fucking pick up the fucking garbage. That's how you fucking solve the problem. You don't force people to have these horrible bamboo straws that are just, everybody hates them, you know, but you put it in your mouth and it's mixed, it becomes moldy and disgusting. It falls apart, but you still fucking drink out of it because, you know, that's what the restaurant does. And, Everybody, you know, they, they force you to accept these little defeats over and over and over, these little compromises until the little plastic straws, they, they, they add up, you know, and that's, that's what we've seen. And this whole thing is all about guilt, right? So you have this, this first of all, for the reason we have the lockdown is, is obvious to me, which is that people have put their grandmothers and grandfathers into retirement homes in which they were, in which they're basically like cattle and because of the shit fucking socialist systems all over the place and because of the culture which uh, of cutting corners and all sorts of bureaucratic garbage and mismanagement and all those sorts of shit, like people just got sick in bulk and it was just managed like fucking shit. Like this is, like, this is what is the root cause of all, of all these problems. Um, so anyway, so what we are, like, the, the, I think the route that uh, of fighting, first of all, who really knows if there isn't fighting, Dave? Like, would you even 
be able to tell by the media reports? Like, what about on Twitter? If there was an actual rebellion going on, like, would we even be aware? We wouldn't even know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. Even even the uh, the anti mask protests that have happened here in Calgary, where you'd expect like that, we're we're probably compared to most major cities in the world, probably way more rational, way more anti mask, way more anti lockdown. That's why they haven't pushed us as hard as most places. Um, and and we've got um, you know protests. I I would say educated guess. I stumbled upon a protest down south downtown. I would say two to 3,000 people, and then I saw the news article on it um, the next day, and they're like, hundreds gather. Yeah, h- hundreds so of right-wing Nazi supporters got together, yeah, and yeah basically. And I, it's interesting, because I had seen, like, it was very similar in size to the Black Lives Matter protests that we'd had, literally walking the same route, um, like, a couple months before. And the, the demographics um, were very different, um, not in terms of race. Like they're both pretty much representative of the, the general mix of, of races that we have in Calgary here. But the Black Lives Matter protests were all um, like 15 to 22 year olds, whereas the anti-mask mm-hmm. protests were a lot more people of 30 and over. And I think yep. it, it, it's super interesting the way that they've um, situation they've created it's kind of the same thing that's going on in the u.s with trump you've got these two groups of people that are very angry um and they don't really know why they've been given a target right the black lives matter people are told that uh the reason that their life sucks is because of racism and um systemic racism and corporatocracy and all of these things and then on the flip side patriarchy um, yeah yeah, exactly. On the flip side, the, the Trump supporters or the, the anti-maskers or, or that group, um, their, their actual complaints are the same. Their complaints are that the, the link between the effort that they put into their lives and the outcome of their lives, meaning how much wealth they accumulate, um, is not the same as it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So that, that's what mm-hmm. both sides are actually complaining about. But uh, that side's being told that it's... Uh, you know, it's the liberal elite, um, it's immigrants, um, you know, they're, they're stealing your jobs, they're, they're outsourcing your jobs, and they're both marching with, like, the same questions. They're like, what the fuck? Our lives are not supposed to be like this. And people feel a very deep, uh, ingrained wrongness about the state of the world. And that's what they're, they're generally marching for, but they, like, what they're actually chanting has no link to what their what their actual problems are. Of course, and everyone is confused. That's the that's the the main problem that I've been you know, trying to look at it from a one of the big perspectives is guilt. The young people are driven to guilt that the planet's you know last, just last year the planet had ten years to live and we all have to be ashamed of ourselves for what we did and this kind of like um kind of like catholic almost um aspect of guilt that was um yeah the the guilt thing is a good point because guilt has been you know i i first sort of renounced religion when i was younger because i could not uh, um you know agree with the with the guilt tripping um you know and my, my grandmother was very religious and i was the first in my family to sort of renounce all of it now now th- these days like you know i i have a much broader more mature view of all of that stuff um you know and, and i've and i've dug into different concepts for different people but i i think you know the the mechanism that the church used at at peak church uh and at you know when it was at its peak as an institution of basically serfdom was guilt in much the same way uh you know you you should feel bad because you're attracted to this woman. So as a result, uh, you know, pay penance, um, you know, repent, and you know, then God will help you not feel guilty. But it, it was all through guilt, and and it's the, it's the same course, fucking playbook. Course. But in the absence of in the absence of a religion or in the absence of God, now it's about we're all in this together, and if you're not with us, uh, you're a Nazi. Of course, and people are confused about their genders their gender roles that's why fucking mm-hmm. all the awesome women 
are making the same comment over and over is where are all the good men that thrive on providing and protecting and that emanate this energy, you know? And I think people are confused about, as Dave pointed out, like, you know, the money is just, where's the money going? Where's the money going? Like, why am I not been working so hard? Um, they're confused about, um, you know, uh, like their identity versus the collective. They're confused about, um, I think they, there's a, there's something that I, that I saw, which was um, kind of like a terror of this meaningless to life. Like they don't see any meaning to life and they're, they're just trying to mm -hmm. fill it. Like the, the, and obviously all of this is the, re, the, the result to a large degree of high time preference as a result of the money printing and the central banking system. But I mean, obviously there's, there's, there's evidently like a cultural movement. I mean, this is Anne Rand all over, right? Um, the same playbook at the intelligence yeah, yeah. and academic level. And it's just, I call it, I don't think there's a, there's a conspiracy. I mean, Dave and I came up with a lot of explanations as to why, like who's driving this thing. And I think the, my terminology was, it is the, the, the spontaneous uh, order of plausible deniability and uh, the emergence of ass covering, you know, it's kind of like everybody all over the world is is just this shallow, unprincipled, unvirtuous person um, that is conditioned to comply, that is confused about <clears throat> his role in the universe and identity. Um, most of them are either atheists or they don't really believe in in anything. They, they believe in the collective, and they're trying to compensate so hard for this sense of guilt they and in the collective and, they, and they can't even. And they can't even define the fucking collective. Sorry to sorry to cut you off there, but they can't even like they 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 say they believe in something, but that it's like completely fucking undefined, and that undefinition drives them crazy, and it sort of it it self reinforces. Of course, um, of course, and and everything sorry. they believe is is anti natural, anti natural to the order of things and to like the human body. For example, look at just how the level of health and nutrition and lifestyle of, of the people in North America and the Western world, and they all feel bad and look at, they have all fucked up families and they all have like, women have careers and you know, they, 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 fe they feel resentful and everybody feels resentful and everybody's trying to pretend, you know, cause they just can't fucking look at themselves in the mirror, man. That's exactly what's going on. And they're trying to project this virtue signal around them to fucking sleep at night. and you know, that's that's really like the shallow, meaningless lifestyle and compliance is just a shield against all of that. It's, you basically cannot take responsibility for your situation. So you just seek any way possible to opt out and comply and outsource is like, it's not my fault, I'm just complying, I'm just doing my job, I'm just doing this and that. And that's exactly what's going on. And the, the problem with libertarianism and like the free market solutions like vaccination certificates, is that it fails to take into account that like they are fucking putting us in prison like at some point the market solutions don't work when like you you are essentially a criminal organization at that, this point right so you know and a point also to make with this thing about the numbers like i don't really give a fuck what the masses think about the lockdowns like i'll give you an example i was at a protest in calgary i just saw i was passing by and it was a protest against the pedophiles and the globalists Right, so there's like, I don't know, 30 people and there's like two different preachers on soapboxes. And however, there's like six huge bikers that are clearly doing security. Like they looked, you know, potentially outlaw motorcyclists. They were the Odin guys or something. So they're kind of like, you know, I don't know, some political far right motorcycle. But I was just thinking like, you know, that's why the theory of the hundred men with pickup truck <laughs> comes in, you know, like, Yes, there's a few amount of people that are the remnant. And, you know, we have to take the story of Atlas Shrugged to be literal. It is not a metaphor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Atlas Shrugged mm -hmm. is not yes. a metaphor. It is an instruction book. It is literal. And, like, I, yes. and I yes. actually became to become a lot more religious during the lockdowns. I had these episodes in the summer where I felt really kind of like, a very large empathy with the, the suffering and the lack of freedom and definitely felt a very strong mission and message. And like, I mean, there's there's definitely an alignment of, of I think the timeline is like accelerating. Like things are really moving fast all over the world. 
I'm in Central America right now, and what I'm seeing is a massive, unbelievable influx of extremely intelligent people from all over the world. Um, some have their own names for remnant. Actually, one of them said they were the zebras and explained to me the exact same story as the remnant. Um, another one told me the story of the indigos, uh, which is a very similar story than the remnant. And I started to also learn about you know, this genetic predisposition that some people have. Uh, a gene called DRD7, I think, or DRD4-7R, DRD4-7R, which is a genetic predisposition to risk-seeking and to um, kind of the, all the things that we're into. And they are flocking, and, and th things are moving so fast everywhere. And I really feel like all of the people who are in tune with the frequency of Bitcoin, the sovereign individual, the family, you know, like gender role, not being confused, right? You are a man, you fucking provide, you fucking create out of fucking nowhere. You use your brains and your arms and you create wealth from thin air. And, you know, you're a woman, you nurture, you grow, you take care of the resources, you manage the tribe, um, all, all of the way that we interact with our neighbors. You know, essentially, Dave, like this, what, what we, we want, what we need to do is a mix of localism, skin in the game, and soul in the game. I mean, for all for all of what Nassim Taleb has become, which is a very prophetic, I think, profound thing to see, like the you know the prophet, like Kramer. It's exactly like in Atlas Shrugged, that kind of like uh, physics professor that Stadler, um, yeah. Uh, Stadler, Stadler, yeah, that Stadler, yeah. which was the worst. You know, he he knew better, but he was just looking out for himself because Nassim Taleb is a scared old man, right? Um, but it's almost it's almost like Dave, like what we have to get to is what he was saying, like skin soul in the game and the Lindy effect, look at what's working. And like on, honestly, at this point there is there's there is an, an, an immediate urgency for people to set themselves up in, in a in a mechanism where they can just say fuck you and opt into this lifestyle, which will be the salvation, right? So in order to salvage your life right now, you need to get get yourself multiple sources of income. Get yourself the uh, uh, physical capacity to be mobile around the world, to move yourself, um, family support, you know, um, and f you need to think of the next five years are going to be this tyrannical regime of the Great Reset. And you have a very, very short window to figure out where you're going to spend those five years. And I think the system is going to crumble, obviously. I think the f nobody will fight for, for a while. And we're going to have to wait this one out until it falls on itself. And I think like the glorious return of the remnants is not going to be for 10 to 15 years. Like I was, when I look at the chart of a chart of Bitcoin, I definitely see like a period of 10 years, I think, which is like massive redistribution of wealth towards us, which are very like radical and politically motivated and well-connected. Pretty much all of the Bitcoiners are um, versus a larger amount of people. And it's going to be a very, very, tough time and the citadel is a metaphor um it is a metaphor the citadel is not a place like we're not francis is not working on a massive hotel somewhere and gonna invite you like john galt you know the citadel is a way of life it's much different and people need to take that shit really seriously and if they don't they need to you know like they were saying become expert at pretending to comply and swallowing their pride and finding ways in the underground which is a very time consuming endeavor and definitely is not the right place, for example, to do what you're supposed to be doing, which is, you know, having a family, getting your job and progressing in life and dedicating yourself to your hobbies. So pretending to comply uh, is going to be uh, getting old very quick, I am, I'm afraid. With, with all that going on, I resources. think about buying some Bitcoin soon. <laughs> yeah, no, man, you're too late. You're too late. Yeah. You missed out. Yeah. Um, I, I want I want to pull on a couple of threads there. So, uh, before when you're talking, uh, Francis, when you said, you know, th this is not some grand conspiracy because the, the the shit the shit is too random and too ridiculous. And I think uh, in Atlas Shrugged, uh, Ayn Rand really lays it out properly. You know, a lot of like the buffoons who are trying to implement shit like you know the globalist agenda and the and the uh, and the Great Reset and all that sort of stuff. They're too fucking incompetent to wipe their own ass, uh, let alone you know, manage some sort of global conspiracy. So, so like you said, I, I actually, I'm in agreement with you with this idea that it's, uh, it's a mixture of 
ass covering and the, it, it's the it's the ramification think of, of it like this, covering uh, Alex, my ability. right think of it like this like the 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 rain is being infected with this gas of sludge and it's raining sludge all over the world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The rain amasses where it is the lowest points. It goes to the lowest hanging fruit, you know, when the, I, the analogy mm -hmm. of the sludge is like this creeping, this infiltrating, this corrosive, corrupting kind of like, imagine like a vine spreading. And it's just this like culture of plausible deniability and people all over the world are just spontaneously finding this magnificent excuse to justify the fucking A, the bubble, the Ponzi, the mediocrity, the failure of the social, like anything, anything you can think of, like, like, why are people so unhealthy? Why the hospitals overrun? Why is this, this, this? Everything is the virus, and anybody that has fun and everybody that's free, it's their fault. It's like the perfect, like, everybody gets to blame the fucking virus for something. And you know what? I know, and I figured it out, and that's discovered because I was a researcher before, and there is kind of a conspiracy. There is kind of an inner circle, and that is the international no, public is. health. It is the international public health bureaucracy at the WHO. And what I kind of understood from Bitcoin conferences, for example, they have their own kind of Bitcoin Twitter. Like they have the, the fucking public, international public health bureaucrat conferences. And, they, then, uh, and then they came up a fucking year and a half ago in 2019. They ran a conference. I think it was in Montreal. And our fucking guy was there. And they came up with a concept called health in all policies. And their argument was, well, Basically, technically, anything that the government does can in some way, shape, or form affect some area relating to public health. As a result, we, the public health experts of the world, should have a say in all policies so that we can validate like their public health and assess and recommend regarding their public health impact. And then like they got this shit at the WHO, and that is like the guiding philosophy. So you've got like all of these people that were fucking nothing, right? They were nothing. Like, look at the nurses, okay? The fucking hospitals, they fucking hate their boss. They hate their job. They have a fucking shit job. They work 60 hours a week, 50 hours a week. Their union is like always trying to fix some fucking problems. And the public health sector just sucks. And they're always burning out. They're burning out last year and the year before. And they've been burning out for fucking 20, 30 years. And now this year they're burning out. They're burning out like they've always been burning out. But now it's an epidemic of burnouts, you know, like all, and of course, because all of the resources are again being misallocated all over the place. So all the existing problems they had are massively uh, exacerbated. And you have so much goddamn money going to the COVID profiteers is unreal. All the guys importing the masks, doing the plexiglass were billions of dollars. Like, I mean, have, like so many people have a map and this is what we call public choice theory. There's an actual science behind this as far as political science and economics goes. This is very sound. And it's a theory that analyzes the public policy outcomes as being the market, you know, game theory type Nash equilibrium, where very easy to example, for example, uh, it turns out, for example, uh, why uh, the, uh, uh, if you have a policy that's going to take uh, one cent from everyone and give it all to one guy, that one guy has a really, 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 really strong incentive to get a very big lobbying force behind himself to get that, uh, that policy going. But the guy that has like only one cent uh to to pay for that you know he might be upset but he's not gonna like effectively organize himself mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. why there are smoking bans for example and stuff like that um so so that's kind of like what what's the the the, the thing that's played that's at play and uh what can you do to fight this emergence of sludge well you can't really i mean it's like fucking tsunami of sludge i mean the only if you see a tsunami of sludge of fucking goo approaching you what would you do you well first you you, you can surf it <laughs> you know but you would like you know get a get on a boat and fucking you know get away from there like you, you know you can kind of like try to you know go go with the flow and you know stay on top of the wave trying not to get swallowed too much and like you know but it, it's 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 happening it's inevitable i, I mean I, I don't see any way to stop this thing uh, at this point the 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 Rubicon has been crossed. The the all of the rules have changed. I mean, there's no going back from this. It's only the only thing that's going to happen is going to double down 
evermore. And yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have any any hope for the situation, but I am very, very pessimistic. The only thing you can do really is to buy Bitcoin, get the fuck out, like secure your food supply chain, secure your, like just think about, be a, like the preppers were fucking right. Okay, so imagine all the crazy prepper shit you've heard about your entire life, like, mm -hmm. and just do that. <laughs> like they were right. All, 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 the, all the optimists were wrong. Shit is hitting the fan. The governments are out to get us for real. And the fucking economy is going to break down. The food is going to run out. Like, this is not a drill. I am absolutely 100% thinking of that at this very moment. This is exactly what I'm focused on right now. I'm not focusing too much on my actual job. I'm focusing almost exclusively right now on setting myself up for when that happens. So that's, that's kind of like my big recommendation. I 100% I agree with you. I'll, I just want to finish that previous thread and then I want to throw it over to David. But the, 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 what I was describing before, which I, I agree with you in the sense that there's always some group lobbying for something and, you know, they've got their fucking sticky little fingers and shit. And, you know, like you said, the, the, the public, um, the health thing, 100% agree with that. The, the, the issue, I think, and this is the greatest issue, is that through all of this confusion um through you know and and we can sort of draw it back to the the original promise of the state was you know this institution that would you know protect your property rights and and you know so, sort of you know act as uh something that will allow you to pursue you know freedom life uh you know happiness and and um and liberty right now what it did was it ingrained you know, slowly by slowly, this notion of giving up responsibility. And I was talking, to, so you actually described the opposite of what I described, um, but in the, like, so different words, but to describe the same thing when I was on a podcast the other week, where I said that the actual cause of all of this is the renunciation of responsibility. That's like, literally, if we look at the root cause of all the fucking dramas that are happening now, and it lines up- You are, you are correct. Us covering you, and plausible yeah. deniability. It's the same fucking thing. That's exactly it. As, and, and for me, like what I love about Bitcoin is it's like the, uh, it's the renaissance of responsibility. Um, you know, we, we've sort of moved into, I, I, I read a recent article called Utopian Dystopias. And in there I say, we have a choice as people to sort of optimize the society we live in for either safety or freedom. Now, freedom requires radical responsibility, whereas safety, in order to get safety, you actually have to give up responsibility. It's just compliance. Safety is compliance exactly. and freedom is responsibility. And, and what happens is the world we're living in today is the, is the result of this constant step-by-step towards the complete renunciation of responsibility at the individual level. And when you uh, zoom out and make that a macro issue, you get what we have to fucking today, which is complete sludge, like, like you said. So it's- um, So you are correct, just, uh, you, Alex, Alex, and it goes very to a like technical point. Like, why do we have to wear the fucking face diaper why do we have to pretend to stay six feet away from each other? It is the argument that they're putting out is that the hospital system is overrun. So what, how does that affect me personally? Well, since we have socialized the healthcare, if I mm -hmm. get sick, mm -hmm. then they have to pay. So they are entitled to how I live my life because how I live my life affects their fucking taxes. Right mm -hmm. and affects their job and you know so I think it was one of our one of our friends Save Dean or maybe we were talking and I had this kind of like illumination that socialized healthcare was the actual fucking devil I mean the actual like I mean the actual literal Satan like of the Bible uh, like you know you see for example a good example of this is the great German writer. Uh, von Goethe with his play Faust, in which the devil, you know, takes the shapes of humans and kind of like um, whispers in their ear, and he whispers in their ear the idea of of uh, fiat money, you know, of oh well, there's gold in the ground, you can pretend that you've already, you know, got the gold, and um, like 
socialized medicine is if if Satan had a plan to fuck everything up, it would be to say, hey, now whatever everyone does is you're you're entitled to dictate it because that's the common pledge, the social contract, or whatever fucking bullshit. I didn't say no fucking social contract, by the way, but whatever fucking bullshit. And like what the craziest part is, for example, I've been paying fucking taxes all my life. I've never used up the public health care, almost never. I mean, so anyway, so the public health system and now the, the public education system, the ownership of the kids by the government, you are allowed to operate. Like the, so basically we, we are very close to the kids, to the kids license, to the child. We are, mark my fucking words. I mean, people on Twitter who follow me, they know that when I do these kind of predictions, they usually do come true. And the child license is coming. It's definitely coming in the Western world at some point or not. Every single aspect of our lives is gonna, it's gonna be some way or, or form a disincentive or some penalty. And then it always, it's, so as we we're saying, it's only gonna double down. <laughs> like there's no, yeah. there's no, there's, there's, there's no going back now. So the, the whole socialized medicine thing is exactly what Alex was saying, right? It's the reason that socialized medicine is appealing to a large number of people is because it removes the consequences from your choices. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. if you live an unhealthy life because the government will be there to save you, right? Like mm -hmm. get your, you get diabetes, the government's there to save you. So I think like that's the bigger point. And I think that's what, what I was describing before where people are feeling this disconnect from what they actually do, how much work they put into their lives and what the results of their lives are. And I think that's why you see a lot in um, what you would call like conservative circles of almost like romanticizing like the 1950s and 60s where, um, you know, you, you had a much more direct link. You could have a single, single person, single man, usually, um, within a household earning a living, working, you know, working at a regular job, working hard and earning enough to prosper. And that's the disconnect that is going on right now. And as a result of that disconnect, people don't understand what, like why that disconnect is there. The, the problem is obviously the money, right? They've, they've diluted what money means. And so it doesn't matter how hard you work, the bankers and the bureaucrats are taking too much off the top for you to ever uh, work your way out of the hole that they've put you mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I, abs absolutely. You know, and I think, uh, you know, our friend Madex has one of the best ways to describe them. It's the time thieves, because they've just been gradually, gradually stealing the time and opportunity from people away to do anything beyond and you know, one of the worst arguments, inflation is a very, very interesting thing because people talk, have now been conditioned to believe that inflation is like the seasons, it's like spring. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, every year the money makes a little bit and then you have to work a little more. And then uh, actually, you, you know, your employer is gonna give you a raise, don't worry. So if you just keep working, you know, with your 2% with your, with your raise, you're gonna, you're gonna be able to keep up with your, with your little, little payments over there. And you know, you're totally right with the responsibility thing. And that goes back to the <clears throat> skin of the game and soul in the game theory aspect and a way of life where you're describing asymmetric payoffs and asymmetric skin in the game where people who have no skin in the game get all of the payoffs and none of the costs. And, 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 and you, and, <laughs> and, and this, this kind of like mindset, I mean, where I am, for example, in Central America, I'm in nothing short of like an ANCAP community. You know, there's no fucking bailouts out here, man. You are on your own. You are completely on your own. Um, and what has happened is that you have, for example, a great example I love is the Lifeguard Association here. Some guy donates land um, on the fucking strip of this, this Central American, you know, little town, really awesome place starts a gym where the membership pays for the lifeguards and the international lifeguard program and there's lifeguards all over the place and that is not the government doing that um there's the pet rescue there's all sorts of examples there's garbage stuff there's there's all sorts of environmental initiatives like people that are left 
alone and that must rely on each other to survive as is right and good and intended by the fucking emergent order of the universe and God, you know, we live in a fucking tribe with people you know and trust. And yes, you can scale, but trust is not scale. That's why he gave us the fucking brains to invent Bitcoin. Um, yeah. But in order to, in your daily life, it does not scale. Like I had this, you know, this, this I don't know how you call it. It's kind of like a, a, a video that I did the remnant and sludge and you know my example was you know bitcoiners on the internet will not help you pull your pickup truck after the mud and if the thought police comes to get you and you need to hide your kids you know i'm not gonna go on my internet friends to help me escape <laughs> from where the cops are coming i need to be friends with my neighbors i need to be involved with the community i need to you know you need to show commitment all of the value like all of the values that have been removed from this modern lifestyle and um so that is honestly, like I see around me in, in, in these kind of communities, people are just fucking happy, man. They're thriving, they're happy, they're healthy. Everybody's, there's like, there's, okay, I'll give you a, a, another great example. Okay, so I'm buying this piece of land and you guys know this story, but I don't mind sharing it. So I'm buying a piece of property and, um, you know, it, in order for the property to be, uh, for, for property to be acquired and, and so forth, a private road needs to be built and managed in infrastructure and, and with lampposts and shit and provided to the municipal government. So like there in, in some places in the world where the United State is not there to give you a bailout, um, people build the fucking roads. They actually, guys, I'm telling you, I'm going to build the fucking road. People here <laughs> build fucking roads all the time. It's actually cheap. It's a miracle. Like, it's super cheap to build a road. Um, maintaining the road is kind of a pain in the ass, but it's, it's still cheap. Build little bridges is definitely doable, man. People do it fucking all the time. Little bridge with the road is like a thousand bucks. Who will build the roads? We will build the fucking roads. It's not that hard. It really isn't that hard. Um, I, I think I just want to touch on the, the disillusionment. And this is ties back into how Ayn Rand's book was, was a, was a textbook, you know, what was a, was a, was a guide, not a, not a fiction. And it's like, I, I remember when I first read that and I was reading like, you know, how, you know, the, 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 the characters in there were like, they were disillusioned, you know, like the, the people that uh, Dagny met on the street or, you know, that, um, that Jim met on the street and things like that, you know, that they, they were just all this, there, there was this, theme of like meaninglessness uh, pervading society because you know it, it, it had started to to crumble and and I mean Talib for all of his fucking uselessness and despite him succumbing to you know his own thing about uh, you know uh, theories theories versus practice right like he, he's he's now just purely become one of those hypocritical theoreticians as opposed to someone who practices but despite that like you said earlier you know his his poignancy in his books were were absolutely correct and you know he sort of describes what Ayn Rand did through the narrative as you know people don't actually care about inequality what they actually give a shit about is when they know the game is rigged so when we sort of like everyone knows the game is rigged at the moment. And that ties into what Dave was saying. Like, you know, everyone's working, we, we're all doing shit, but we, we feel empty. We, you know, we've got more month at the end of the money. Um, you know, like the, the, it's, everything's backwards. So when you sort of tie in the fact that the game is rigged, the fact that everyone is fucking disillusioned and the fact that responsibility has been eroded and effectively renounced, you know, it, it, it actually makes a lot of sense why we're here and in some ways i'm surprised that we've actually uh gone on this long without seeing a large-scale fucking collapse um you know but because... we have seen the collapse the, the collapse is here it's all around like when i went to montreal i saw the infrastructure like half finished all over the place it's like the collapse the collapse is definitely happening it's just like you know the Rowan. It, it, it's it's a pro the collapse is a process it's, it's a coming process mm, mm, um mm, mm. Uh, and it, it's it's happened uh it's happened before yeah, so think about Touché. think about this. Like, I guarantee you guys know people like this in your lives, and I guarantee you anyone else who listens to this knows people like this in their lives. Just there's a bunch of people out there who are like fairly normal people, good people, um, who are kind of like bizarrely happy that there's this lockdown going on. 
You know what I mean? Because they used to work jobs that didn't really pay them enough, that didn't really give them a path to fulfillment, and they didn't really know where they were going in life. And now they're they're still in that spot, but now it's not their fault, right? And so yes, you you've got people now who like they're you know in in Canada here we've got uh, government assistance for I don't know two or three thousand dollars a month or something like that that. Uh, you can get if you're out of work because of the lockdowns. And I know a bunch of people who are just like very happy to collect that 3000 bucks a month and sit at home and play Xbox and smoke weed and do absolutely nothing. And in their minds, they're just waiting for this all to pass, right? They're, they're just, they're just killing time waiting for the, the government to tell them that it's safe to go back outside. Right. But really like, it, you know, if they actually had a connection, if they had, if they had a belief that more effort put into their own lives would yield a greater result, and that they could work harder and be richer, um, no rational person would be sitting at home playing Xbox and smoking weed. Right? Like those. It was a lie, now, Dave. It was a lie. Now everybody knows it was a lie. The more time yeah, you put in an effort, you don't get the fucking outcome. Yeah, exactly. They'd be they'd be out starting businesses. They'd be out doing side hustles. Um, but they, they like it's been beaten out of them. They don't have that belief, right? They they just think, um, you know, it's it's kind of a why bother? Why bother? I'm a loser now. Yeah, well, why bother? Yeah. Okay, so why, so, so why work, because why we, pay taxes if they can just print money out of nowhere? Because we've got ten minutes left. Um, so so I want to I want to tie this off with just a, a, a discussion around, you know, the fact that. So, so I want to, sorry, let me say it this way. I want to tie it up with the discussion around, you know, what can we do? So two things. One, Francis, you said before that, you know, the sort of the libertarian free market solutions potentially won't work because, you know, we're going to become, you know, criminalized in the process. So, you know, we, we sort of, we, we end up like, again, the characters in Atlas Shrugged who, uh, who are used, like the Hank Reardon's basically, who, who are attempting to, to do something good, but basically get fucking leached along the way so uh, you know so there's that on one side and then you've got this continually growing uh cohort of the of the world of, of you know the, the people out there that are just saying well fuck you know the game is rigged so screw it i'm not going back to work i'm not going to do anything i'm just going to stay here and be unemployed um so what what does this look like for people that you know, want to think for themselves and live for themselves. Like, you know, does that, you know, the, the government handouts and stuff like that, you know, does, does that start to accelerate? You know, does that help precipitate the fall? You know, does, um, you know, you said market solutions like, you know, fake doctor certificates and shit like that won't work. Like, can we dig into a couple of those things before we have to wrap this up? Dave, do you want to start? Dave, you there? Yeah, here we go. Sorry, I was muted. I have a bit of a theory um, specifically with regards to how I think that's going to go down in Canada here. And we're mm -hmm. a little unique in the sense that we're we're like the most, the, the, the least densely populated country in the world. And we have a very broad uh, geographic dispersion of cultures. And so it might be a little different here. But what I think is going to end up happening is that, you know, that exact um, reliance on the state, reliance on more money printed forever and ever is going to continue both at the individual level and at the, um, the, the lower levels of government. So I see our, our municipal and our provincial governments needing bailouts uh, from the federal government fairly soon. And my hope is um, that those will be the catalyst that starts um, moving people to some action. And so that's where I think um, the, like, that's, that's where I think it should go ultimately is we should start to see the meltdown of large governments. Um, you know, they, they can't afford to pay everyone's monthly expenses forever. Like that's just gonna be too quick of a path to hyperinflation. And so I think what they're gonna end up doing is trying to, um, trying to fund the different levels of government strategically. And here in Canada, what that's going to mean is that 
disproportionate amount of funding is inevitably going to go to Eastern Canada, the Montreal, the Toronto, um, where the larger populations are. And in Western Canada, uh, here in Alberta, here in Calgary, I'm hoping that that, you know, what I assume will be a drastic inequality in terms of um, payouts and in terms of results will make people more angry. And so, like, really, really, that's what the question is, is like, at what point do people stop being complacent and stop being uh, happy to sit on their couch and start being angry that the world is not the way that it should be? Okay, but then what do they do that though? Well, what, what we should be doing here is Alberta, our province should be separating from Canada. And I think that's mm -hmm. like, we're, we're probably going to be one of the first major jurisdictions in the world to do that. But I think that's the inevitable result is that a lot of countries are going to end up fragmenting. And a lot of, uh, you know, we're, we're going to see a lot more countries and a lot smaller countries. 10 years from now, instead of there being, you know, 200 some odd countries, there'll probably be a thousand countries in the world. And I think that's only a good thing because it gets people closer. I would love that. But, yeah. But what Francis was describing that. of the, you know, the only rules you should follow are the rules you opt into that you make with your neighbors. And that should mm -hmm. be what the state is. Right? It should be as small as possible, as voluntary as possible and as unintrusive as possible. And so I think eventually um, some jurisdiction somewhere is gonna go full in on that idea of like, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna compete for the best people in the world. We're gonna say, uh, this is where you need to move if you don't want a government that fucks with you. And you know, we've had conversations off, like, off, offline where like, we're all wondering where to go. If there, was a, if there was a single real stable country in the world, offering that kind of um, specific freedom. I think not only would Bitcoiners go there, but rational people um, from all walks of life, you'd end up with just the, a, a, a massive percentage of all the smartest people in the world all living in one country, which would be very beneficial you, obviously to that country. You would, you would hope, you would hope, although, you know, as, as much as I'm optimistic for that, I, I just, I don't know. I'm a little bit more on Francis's pessimistic side. Is I just don't see that happening as quickly or as cleanly as we might like. Yeah, I don't see it happening cleanly at all. Um, I have some I, I have some optimism that it could be fairly clean here because we have kind of the the geography and the social setup for it to potentially happen here. But I think in most places mm -hmm. in the world, it's going to be going to be awful. Like I think we're going to probably see a decade of a variety of civil wars. Mm -hmm. Francis, do you want to I mean, talk through this? Sure, sure. I mean, um, I think they've spot on. I think the, the playbook has been written. Uh, what is happening is that the timeline is just being accelerated. So mm -hmm. um, uh, first off, I mean, I think what's going to go down, if we get back to the audience of who's listening to us, Alex, I think it's fair to say that everyone that's going to listen to this is a Bitcoiner. Yeah. So what's going to happen is that the process of hyper Bitcoinization will take place. I think after the next, the top of the next bubble. So I think the next bubble is going to be similar in the pattern of you know a bit slower, a bit higher, um, and then uh, I think after that we're going to see it within the next four or five years. The backdrop of just what Dave has been saying, like they're going to print money, they're going to centralize everything, they're going to nationalize sectors of the economy. After shrug, this is exactly going to happen. Things are going to start to go out of control, and the the, man, the money is, start, is going to start to devalue, and people are going to rush to Bitcoin, and there's, you know, the, the whole cycle. You're going to, going, to, going, to, going to borrow money in dollars to buy Bitcoin, which has happened. People are going to just think about their debts as just taking as much debt as possible. You know, like exploit the system before it crumbles which is definitely like a rational thing to do and as we all know what we have been discussing for years and years that the entire <laughs> monetary system and financial system is just going to entirely kind of collapse at some point and the nation states are going to go bankrupt and everything's going to kind of like decentralize uh decentralize as uh, as dave has been mentioning and i think what we're going to see in the immediate future is first of all like okay i know for a fact that the brain drain has happened. It is happening. It has happened. Um, people you guys are both absolutely... examples. Yes, we are both examples. And I meet here on a very, 
very frequent basis, people that are that are very highly qualified for their jobs. And it really reminds me of Atlas Shrugged, you know, where you have like Midas mm -hmm. Mulligan, like doing, I don't know, like fucking mm -hmm. potatoes or something. Like here, for example, mm -hmm. like I am interested most of all in helping people with small businesses. I am dedicating a disproportionate amount of my time to a lot of people that I see as fellow remnant that are working on stuff and they're just trying to, you know, not be dependent. Um, I, I see a lot of really good fucking bakers and fucking great restaurant owners and a lot of people are just like coming here and they're like, well, you know what? I don't want the fucking government in my fucking shit. I want to do my stuff on my own. There's no kind of regulation. Everything's kind of, and I think this is happening. And I think the fight is about to happen. So obviously at some point people are going to start to fucking shoot back. I think because what the only option the governments have is to start to blame it on a minority of like the book has been, the fucking playbook has been written, has been done mm -hmm. over and over again. They're, they blamed it on the fucking travelers. They're going to blame it on the rebels. And then for sure they're after the Bitcoiners. Like we're next for sure. Like we're definitely fucking next on top of their list and they're going to start to come after us. And the men, the thing is, you know, as I said, the protest with 30 people, I had six bikers like the men with pickup trucks are not fans of the great reset i can guarantee you i have met many many of them and the big guys with the pickup trucks who know how to fucking weld shit and fucking extract petroleum from the core of the earth with their bare hands are not fans of the great reset the guy with the fucking glasses that drinks soy milk in his pod he's <laughs> a fan of the great reset and um, so it is for the big owners out there it's kind of like usf right so um, we have a disproportionate amount. We are ready to, to expand a disproportionate amount of energy and ferocity to not live in the Great Reset. Like I, we, we like the new, we like the old normal a lot. All of us, like all of the remnant. Um, so I think, I think, you know, really, it doesn't take a lot. <laughs> it doesn't take a lot to switch the balance of power. I mean, you know, there's like the, the someone's gonna. For, for what we're going to see is exactly the sovereign individual playbook. I mean, that's kind of like what Dave was describing. The return mm. on violence is heavily geared towards the individual lone wolf. Obviously, we're going to see more of those. We're going to see mass shootings. We're going to see bombings. We're going to see depressed people doing crazy fucking shit all over the place. It's going to be kind of like this children of men. I really do believe it's going to start to kind of look like that. You know, those, those post-apocalyptic kind of utopian movies like, one I really enjoy comparing it to is the Maiden's Tale. You know, you have your little uniform, you have your little rose, you go into your little store. Everybody kind of like follows a little ritual and it's like fucking religious nut jobs, lol, haha. They kind of laugh at that show. Like I would never fucking put on a little uniform and walk in a file in a store because God said so. I would only do that if the WHO said so because that's science with a capital S. You know, that's, I think that's where we're heading. And as I said, I think like Dave and I, like, what do you think, Dave? Like five, 10 years, something like that, fucking chaos. And the Bitcoiners are gonna obviously become immeasurably wealthy. And the cool thing about that is that there are a lot of radical people that really don't like the Great Reset. And I really like pickup trucks. And I really like guns. And they have a lot of Bitcoins. And they are fucking pissed off. And like, I'm definitely, hopeful like this is we're talking about this is just so we're clear we're talking about the remnant that are out there i don't know how you know in the bible it says we're talking about Dave. in the bible it says that there was three thousand seven thousand remnant in is in israel and i was like a million or so there's like a, a, a percent one percent of the population out there it's just like you know but they're the highest quality individuals like there's yeah, yeah. No way you can be a super high quality individual, well-rounded and be like, I'm a fan of printing money and I want my children to wear masks and I don't want, I want them to not to, to like have like one friend that's assigned by the government and I will chip them to make sure I know where, the, like no remnant wants that. Right. So, yeah. you know, if anything, we're going to Qu fucking quality beats them, quantity. Yeah. Right? Quality like, they, beats quantity. Can they, yeah. Can they even have children? Like at some point, like if they continue reproducing in the same way of life, they're just going to be become infertile, right? Like, it's just gonna be like, I'm, you know, food for thought, like shower thoughts, like it only takes like nine to 12 generations really to start to diverge like from a DNA standpoint, you know? So 
um, maybe the pod people will move to the pods and, and we can do our thing in, in our own place, um, hopefully. Uh, because, I mean, reproductively, I mean, like, it, you know, there's definitely like a, a, a reproductive instinct for the mediocre people congregate towards each other to convert themselves in the mediocrity. And like, there's like, a, I, I see a really large divide accelerating. Like the alpha, let's just use this terminology for anything, the remnant are like, thriving some of them are aren't because their circumstances behind beyond the control but generally speaking they're like thriving and they're they're becoming aware of things and a lot of people are just falling like okay i am fully taking on the role of the mindless sheep like i always knew i was a mindless sheep every all my friends are mindless sheep like my job opportunities depend on me buying a mind being a mindless sheep like the netflix shows are amazing the uber eats is fast I mean, I, the weed is, is fucking awesome. The, 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 the video games are great. You know, all, all that stuff, you know, the, the, the supplements, you know, the, <laughs> all that stuff is great. And the pod is amazing. It's safe and out there it's, you know, it's, it's dangerous. And um, there's going to be other people that are going to be like, oh, let's fucking take over the world <laughs> while they're fucking in their pods. Um, so long story short, we have a massive opportunity, a massive shift of wealth towards like-minded people. and then. Like the undertone here is guys, like we need to fucking take over because once everything collapses and you know, we are going to take over. That's I guess the, the short, ver the conclusion of what I'm saying. <laughs> so that's kind of like right. what I see the, that's what I hope is going to happen. And then eventually we're going to do what we were supposed to do all along, which is build fucking rockets, go to space, make sure the human genome and all of the genome of the earth is uh, replicated throughout uh, orbital stations and to other planets so that if ever we're hit by an asteroid, the genetic history of the Earth and our culture can be preserved. And this is what we're fucking supposed to be doing. This is what Bitcoin's going to bring. This is what the sludge wants to prevent. And uh, that's, that's, that's the goal. So let's just keep the eyes on the price here and uh, let's make it happen. Beautiful way to wrap it up. Um, I, Dave, I don't know if you've got any finishing points. I think yeah. the, the only... Yeah, go. I'll, I'll let you finish up and then we're going to let Francis run. Sure. The only thing I would finish with, it's interesting that we've been talking about the remnant this whole time and we never actually defined the remnant. Um, but I think rather than doing that, I think, like, no, I, I, I don't actually, I kind of like not defining the remnant because I think it's mm -hmm. one of those things that a lot of people who might listen to this might already understand. And certainly mm -hmm. they can figure it out from either reading Francis's Twitter or from Google. Um, but I think um, one thing that would be interesting to put out there is like, if you understand what the remnant is and you are the remnant, that you should contact us. <laughs> you sound like Morpheus now. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. No, it is important. It. it is important. No, because it we're going to need, we're definitely going to need, so the Citadel is a meme, but what the Citadel really is, right? So, you know, Santa Claus is not real, but present still come. So what the Citadel really is, is a network of individuals around the world who are collaborating mm -hmm. um, to share resources and knowledge and wisdom into mutually beneficial relationships, ideologically aligned and trust-based, um, which are realizing that regardless of your opinions, the fa there's like facts that we need people to rely on. Trust, you know, doesn't scale, so let's make it count. Um, and I think that's, that's definitely like uh, these things. So, so we have to talk to each other is the point. People are doing it all over the world, but the remnant needs to contact the other remnant um, and uh, start, you know, uh, the, fir the first the first step is, you know, understanding that you're not alone um, and that think that there's, you know, probably a little bit less than a percentage than 1% of the population. So um, there's there's a few of us. So we should talk. There is. Yeah, there is. So people will um you know who's listening to this who wants to reach out hit me up um i'll put Bray, uh, dave's and um francis's details in here so you can hit them up i think that's really important i think we, we're gonna need to do a round two of this i, I want to talk about like i've i've had some thinking around what the next 10 years looks like and you know i kind of i, I just want to wrap up on one sort of thought that people can take away is this idea of how the cycles of history sort of uh you know ebb and flow and reading reading hopper recently like earlier 
earlier last year, actually, I was reading Hans Simmons Hopper, uh, Democracy, the God That Failed. And he sort of puts forward how natural order emerges. And, you know, we, we naturally uh, select uh, people like noblemen, et cetera, who, you know, to, to sort of lead. And, and effectively, I kind of see the remnant and, and you know, the, 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 the intelligence of us taking up those roles and kind of society moving into a, a more meritocratic feudalism almost where, so, so that's kind of the optimistic version, but whereas the pessimistic version is basically the re-emergence of completely different classes of people um, where, you know, you, you have our type of people, uh, sovereign individuals versus dependent, uh, you know, uh, sludge type individuals. So, so that's probably the more pessimistic view um, of where things might go. But anyway, I think we could talk for fucking hours and we're going to need to do a round two of this. Boys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Um, any final quick comments uh, or a final thing that you want to say? No, thank you. Thank you for having me. For sure. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Alex. And uh, buy your Bitcoins at all costs. <laughs>